Welcome to more World of Warplanes content from the Noble Q, and in this video I'm going to be taking a look at the Tier 8 American Multirole, the F2G Super Corsair, and showing you what this aircraft can do. Here's the F2G Super Corsair on the tarmac outside my hangar, and what we'll do in a moment is look at the, the statistics of this aircraft and compare them to all the other Tier 8 Multiroles, and then we'll uh, have a look at how I've set the aircraft up and then we'll move into a battle. So if you don't want to be looking at a spreadsheet for the next few minutes, use the links below to skip ahead. But with that, let's get to the numbers. And here's the statistics for all the tier eight multi-rolls. Uh, briefly explaining the spreadsheet, the F2G Corsair is in column C and D and all the other multi-rolls occupy two columns off to the right. Uh, the main characteristics, which you can see in the uh, hangar, are down the left here, and all the body, uh, sorry, in the body, is all the statistical information. Uh, green is best in class, if you see that on the spreadsheet. Light blue is second best in class, and lilac or light purple is third best in class. And any plane with a gold coloured background is a premium or reward aircraft. Config configuration is stock in every case. Where available, ordnance is mounted. Uh, no equipment, and the pilot's been sent back to the bar barracks, but the modules are all top modules. So, what have we got here? Perhaps at first sight the gun armament doesn't look too exciting. However, 460 DPS is uh, commensurate with most of the aircraft in this comparison, bar a couple of outliers, which I'll talk about in a moment. And there's a pretty good range on them of uh, nearly 2,500 feet. Now, I've got another source which I've used, and I've popped in the information here. I happen to know that you can get a six second burst off with these guns, and that's a lot of damage if you can hit with the cannons. But do be careful, the dispersion angle uh, is about 0.6, which is a little bit worse uh, than most guns. For instance, if we look at the Tempest, where I've got similar information in place, um, the dispersion angle is about 0.55. Now, at a range of 100 feet, 0.55 means that the bullets, in theory, should spray about in a circle that's less than a foot in radius or a two foot diameter circle, if you like. So it's pretty accurate. Um, however, if you're extreme range, around about 2,500 feet, I would reckon 0.6 is going to spray the bullets around in a, a circle with about a 15 or maybe even 16 foot radius or 32 foot diameter. So you can easily see how you're going to miss extreme range. Outlying aircraft with very good, uh, good guns, the J7W1 Shinden, the Japanese multi-roll, which has monster cannons uh, and quite a short range, um, which is a compensating factor. And the ME2109 TL has also got a lot of armament, um, two 30mm cannons. It also packs a very powerful punch. The other outlier aircraft, funnily enough, the DPS is lower, but do watch out for the I-260, which can snipe you at 3,772 feet. And although I haven't put it in this video, I happen to know that the dispersion angle for that particular cannon, the 57mm, is a horrible 0.15. And that's why it can snipe you at 3,772 feet. And the World of Warplanes team have made this cannon extraordinarily accurate, and I suspect in real life it would never have been that accurate. But just bear in mind you have a sniper to contend with here. Moving on to ordnance, and it is definitely good news. With the exception of the premium J21RB, the Swedish aircraft, the Corsair is best in class. And if you put the special American pilot, Mary Loveheart in this plane, and I often do, you can double these cumulative da damage figures if you can get into a steep, fast dive. And what is 9,000 here becomes 18,000, and in theory, if you could fire off all eight rockets at a single target, that would become 24,000. So that's well worth knowing. knowing. But even if you don't have Mary Loveheart, a carefully placed 1,600 pound bomb is likely to take out the entirety, or very nearly the entirety, of a special object such as. Uh, the, the um, power plant at a mining plant, or the main radar installation at a command centre. This is a very good ground attacking aircraft, uh, and you should exploit that if you can. Particularly use the bomb. If your team isn't supporting you in a sector, you've then got uh, eight rockets, which will take out two gun emplacements, or, and, or, or another secondary object with ease. If we move on to survivability, uh, it's uh, no better and no worse than most of the aircraft. The survivability figures, unsurprisingly, are fairly much uh, uh, the same for all of these aircraft, with the exception of the outlying BVP-210. And if we look at airspeed, 
Again, most of the uh, aircraft are fairly similar in this comparison. The, the jets, the J21RB, uh, the ME190L, and the I-260 will get away from you. So will the BBP potentially, although normally people will try and use maneuverability on that particular aircraft. In fact, in the forthcoming battle, you'll see an ME109TL fly away from me. But other than that, for multi rolls, the, the airspeed is reasonably competitive. And as you can see, you've got a pretty good dive speed there, which will help you, if, uh, which is in, important to note, if you are using Mary Loveheart, you are gonna have to get up to a very high speed to make sure that her skill activates. When it comes to maneuverability, again, it's somewhere in the middle of the pile. You want to watch out for the J7W1 Shinden and the BBP210 if you're fighting multi rolls. Clearly, you are not going to outturn most fighters unless they're particularly badly flown. Um, that said, again, in the forthcoming battle, you'll see that I do have a couple of jewels uh, with, well, more than one, a couple of jewels with the BBP210 uh, and come out on top and a jewel with the J7W1 bot, where I, I'm fine. I wouldn't try those that with a human pilot in a J7W1 phone. If you know how to turn, then even the Tempest and the Sea Fang, which normally should be able to outturn you, will probably fall to your guns. When it comes to altitude performance, however, um, although it's not worst in class, uh, actually it probably is worst in class, not quite, the SU-9 is worst in class, there's another sniper uh, aircraft, by the way. I should have mentioned that. That one will snipe you out at 3,444 feet, potentially. And probably the accuracy on the gun is similar to the I-260. Should have mentioned that before. But the altitude performance is pretty poor. This is an aircraft that you're not going to push up to attack uh, high-flying bombers. Low-flying bombers, yes, that's a possibility. And as we know, lots of human players like to fly their bombs quite low now under the influence of the EF-131's uh, performance characteristics. Um, so you are going to be concentrating at mid-level combat or lower and trying to take out ground targets. And that, in a nutshell, is the F-2G Corsair. It's excellent at attacking the ground. ground. It has excellent guns, which if you can get aircraft in front of you, you'll be able to knock them down pretty quickly. But just watch out for the inaccuracy. So what you're looking to do is take out ground targets and you're looking for isolated aircraft or aircraft or targets of opportunity, but you need to keep a wary eye out for fighters and avoid those if you can. Let's have a look at how I've set my Super Corsair up. And the first thing to note is it's a specialized aircraft, which means that all equipment and consumable slots are available. And what have I done with them? With 0.6 dispersion angle on the guns, making them a tad inaccurate, I've gone for a gun sight. No surprises there. With respect to the airframe and the engine, I'm looking mostly at a, a maneuverability build. So I have the lightweight wing frame and the lightweight power units. I have opted to put on a polished skin, which increases the speed of the aircraft a little, but there is a penalty on maneuverability if you mount this piece of equipment, you should note. You could look at strengthening, strengthening the airframe instead if you want to avoid using maneuverability. The ordnance is extremely good on this aircraft and I've looked to improve the speed at which it uh, is reloaded by putting on strength and hard points. Consumables, it's a single seat aircraft, so fire extinguisher, pneumatic control assist if I need it in a dogfight to improve uh, maneuverability for 10 seconds, engine cooling to give me a ten, 10 extra seconds of boost on top of whatever boost I happen to have available when I deploy that, I don't use gold ammunition, so universal ammunition here and improved fragmentation. If we look at the pilot, we have the special uh, pilot, Mary Loveheart, who's nominally assigned to the P-47B Thunderbolt at tier six. However, if you pay, to, uh, trans pay for retraining, you can assign it to any aircraft and both skills, special skills will apply. We'll come on to those in a moment. If this were a standard pilot, I would go for aerodynamics expert first. I possibly would go for engine guru next and then marksman one. In this case, I have acrobatics expert, which is not a bad, uh, sorry, uh, aerobatics expert, which is not a bad choice, because again, it improves the maneuverability of the aircraft. And in the battle that's coming up, you'll see that helps me. As far as the two special skills are concerned for Mary Loveheart, the ordnance is already very good. And this skill, if you can get us into a steep enough and fast enough dive will double the damage. That's impressive. However, you do get a useful benefit from Eagle, Eagle's wings, and we'll talk about that in a moment. Here we go. If we look at airspeed, we can see that the boost duration is actually 17 seconds. Now, I didn't talk about 
boost in the numbers. It's a fairly ordinary 15 seconds for a multi-role, but I'm getting a 10% benefit from uh, uh, Mary uh, Loveheart here, and that pushes it up to 17 seconds. So that's how I've set this aircraft up. Let's go and see how it can perform in battle. And this is the Northern Bridgehead map, and it's the Cold Skies variant, um, which is a four sector map unusually in something of a Y shape, uh, a lowercase y perhaps. Uh, two command centers, a forward airstrip and a garrison. The command centers obviously are the strategically important sectors because not only do you get the resources every three, every five seconds, but uh, enemy sectors are attacked by bomber flights that the sector releases. The forward airstrip has some tactical importance or less than although less than normal because it's in the center but of course there's only uh, three other sectors to which you're trying to fly you can fly around this empty space here uh, if you have to and avoid uh, going through the center and you can also select it as a spawn point which is useful tactically and then there's the garrison off to one side where you just get your three resources every five seconds and that's the least important sector of the map you can take a look at the order of battle we can see that i'm bottom tier and I have uh, in my team uh, an ME262 HG2, and one of the new and relatively new Antonov M mashers, and also a heavier P1056. On the enemy team, they lack one of our, the tier nines, but they do have the powerful F94D, uh, another powerful aircraft in the shape of the B29C Super Fortress, which is specialized. That's going to be worrying. Uh, a BVP210 and a Spitfire 14. And on the face of it, I would say that although we have the tier nine, the enemy certainly has the aircraft to be uh, competitive. So let's see how this battle works out. And so on this map, we spawn near a command center and that's where I'm going to go straight away. And the first thing that's in my mind is to use the bomb on at least one of the secondary objects, if not the special object uh, in this sector. So let's see how we get on with that. And I'll do that in a dive. I like dive bombing in the Corsair. And if you have Mary Loveheart in the plane, of course the effects of the ordnance are doubled if you can get the dive steep enough and fast enough. So that's well worth doing. So I begin my dive at the special object, release the bomb, and let's see what the outcome is. And the outcome is a destroyed special object. And conveniently, an enemy air, uh, air defense aircraft flies in front of me. And I swing around to find another one. They we're already uh, more than three quarters of the way to capturing this sector. And one of the air, air defense aircraft has got behind me, but I decided to concentrate on the one in front of me. And as you can see, not only does this aircraft have good guns, so a good bomb, it has good guns as well. Now, don't overlook the rockets. Spoilers, I don't use them in this video, but uh, if you have a target where you need to do more work on the ground, those, gun, uh, those rockets will take out two gun emplacements or a secondary object with ease. So we decide to jazz with the J7W2, and that's frightening. And as you can see, I get hit hard by the cannons. Now, in theory, I shouldn't be able to turn one of these, but I know what I'm doing. Ooh, some ugly artifacts in the video there. I do apologize. Uh, not me. That's the way the replay is constructed. What I was about to say is I shouldn't be able to turn one of these. And if it was a human player, I certainly wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now. But as you can see, with my ability to turn and that being a bot, I was actually competitive in the maneuver. And I would have actually killed it myself had it not been finished off by, uh, I think, the, uh, the ME262. I have the BVP210. It's on very low health. If I can land the guns, it's going to go down. And fortunately, I did that just before it was able to get a bead on me with its probably rockets. And we have the airfield. Now, with the B29 uh, in the game, on the opposing side, and as you can see, I've just marked it for attack. We can't afford to sit on two sectors. We have to go off attack and take other sectors. So I take out uh, the French ground attacker. I then turn for another aircraft. And unfortunately, without me realizing it, that exposes me to the Spitfire behind me. I do what I can. I can't get the F-94D down and the Spitfire finishes me off. So unaware of what was happening there. And we managed to spawn back in at the airfield, and we immediately go looking for targets. In the meantime, my team has managed to get to an extra sector. It's not likely that we'll be able to hold on to everything, but I will try and clear this sector out if I can. So 
begin working over the I-250 and destroy it with these good guns. They do need a little bit of management, but uh, they're very destructive. I'll size up the BPVP-210 again. He's on fire. It starts turning too late. And even though in theory it's much more maneuverable than my aircraft, I'm able to put him down. And we find the ME109TL. Now that I can outmaneuver. It can fly away from me, but not if it's too close to me like that. And the J7W2 conveniently in front of my guns again as I turn. And they're all lining up for me. One of those games. The NC1070 or 1070, whichever you prefer, is there for me to shoot down. It's finished off by one of my teammates. And as I do that, the enemy bomber flight takes the command centre. Now, I shouldn't really need to go to the command centre here, but it appears that I decided I would go and help just in case we didn't take it, which is when enemy aircraft spawned and came towards me. So we're now getting into a bit of a dogfight, and it's the BVP-210. Again, normally I shouldn't be able to outturn this, but with my turning skills and the cooperation of the enemy pilot, I'm able to uh, do severe damage to it and then it gets finished off by one of my teammates. And I lost my wing there. Avoided a, a ram more by luck than judgment. And then swing round on the tail of the Spitfire. Now, the Spitfire has decided to go for the air defence aircraft. I think that was a mistake. He should have turned and gone for me. And the result is that I put it, uh, destroy him as well. Now we've lost the airfield and at this point I decide I should go back to the command centre and it's convenient for me to try and chase the ME 109 tl I'm trying to put a couple of shots into him even though he's at extreme range because sometimes if you do that the bot will turn around and engage and that's what I want in this case but on this occasion the ME 109 tl keeps flying towards the uh, command centre in order to defend it and I have to give up firing at it. And then as it swings round to attack a, te a teammate he comes within a range again and I'm able to use the full power of my cannons to make him blow up, just like that. And with that kill and the assistance of my teammates, we're doing a little bit of ping-pong with the enemy, we're bouncing sectors between us, but we currently have both command centres. And that means we're getting the advantage of at least uh, two bomber flights heading towards enemy sectors, and the en enemy has a no bomber flights apart from any that are current on the map, and as far as I can tell, there are none. Go hunting down other aircraft, looking for something isolated. Turns out to be the ME109TL again. I want to send, put this chap, this particular bot on my Christmas list, because he kept on feeding me his hit points in this game. And that's appears as the airfield. The bots blow up, and I look to see what's left. And with the B-29C active, it's no surprise that we've lost one of the command centres. I suppose that's the NC-1070 again in front of me, so I go hunting it. And I think I may actually shoot through my own heavy here, which is a bit naughty. And certainly the way he broke off made me think that I hit him. Shouldn't do that. And he, that allows me to... Uh, work uh, over the uh, MC-1070. That brings up the wind legend and the heavy finishes him off. So in a way he got the kill that he deserved uh, and if I did put a few shots to him um, that's perhaps recompense for uh, poor play on my part. Not a good idea to shoot down your own aircraft normally. Now the airfield uh, is under threat and I decide that at this point we can try and just hold on to the sectors we've got. So we go and find the BVP again. Again, he's on low health. Like he was the first time we engaged him, and I put him out of the game. The Spitfire is busy with another aircraft. Using my turning skills, I'm able to stay with him long enough. Especially as my uh, the teammate manages to make a manoeuvre in a, a way that's advantageous to me. And down goes the Spitfire as well. The ME 109 TL comes into view again, offering more hit points. 
I think about swinging around for what's behind me and decide I'm safe. And with that destruction of the ME-109TL, the uh, Hero of the Sky Badge goes through. I put a few shots into the B-29C and then I think I'm in an awful position to attack that behind him and I dive away. No thank you, don't want any of that. That brings me towards uh, an IL-40 or and I explode that uh, in a satisfying manner as well. We've just hung onto the airfield and that means that we've now won to this game. And there we go. 18,000 plus personal points and some medals there, which are quite nice. Not a bad game. So let's review the outcome of this battle. And as we can see from the center, it's a five shark run battle or grade one multi-role fighter if you prefer. 134,000 and one credit, silver. Um, of which about 45,000 were due to the premium account bonus. If we look in the message box, we can see that we lost 9,400 credits on repairs. So we were shot down once. The experience, 8,906 with bonuses. This was the first win of the day. There's a premium account bonus in there as well. 445 free experience again with a premium account bonus. Some nice medals, but no tokens because they were earned in previous battles. The Winged Legend, Hero of the Sky and Lambert Medal. Turning to the personal score tab, we can see that uh, one of the uh, our specific missions was complete and the other two were one leg short. That was just enough to give us the five chevrons, 13 points there. Uh, 18,165 personal points with four sectors captured. Aerial targets, 14 destroyed. Damage, 6,096 with 29 critical hits. Uh, destroyed once. Capture points received 630, which uh, 360 came from defending sectors and 270 came from attacking sectors. Just the one ground target destroyed, but you saw the effect of that bomb with Mary Loveheart in the aircraft. Uh, 8,464, uh, which is well within the capacity of uh, that bomb if you manage to get into a steep dive and fast. Um, that bomb will take out any special object in the game if you manage to meet those conditions and five assistances there as well. Turning to the team score tab, we can see that that was enough for first place, both by chevrons and uh, by personal points. Nice contribution from the uh, Piggy, or the P1056, uh, and some contributions from other players there. Interesting name, you World of Warplanes Community 3. Wonder if that has any significance. And on the other side, good effort from the tier nine F94D Starfire. Again, the B-29C Super Fortress showing that it can fly around if unopposed and do significant damage. And we had um, the Warthog, uh, as I call it, or the Piggy, as I sometimes call it. I would guess that he took down that bomber once or twice, otherwise that score would have been significantly higher and we probably wouldn't have won. And some contributions from the uh, rest of the team, but they were under pressure most of the game, so perhaps not surprising they were a little bit low. And that concludes my look at the F2G Super Corsair, an excellent ground attacking aircraft, particularly if you put the special American pilot Mary Loveheart in it, and equipped with powerful, although somewhat inaccurate cans, that, if you're supported by your teammates, will allow you to clear out enemy aircraft from a sector with ease. Well, I hope you found that useful, and that if you did, you'll come and see my future content. But until then, this is the Noble Q, signing out.